Here's one more optimization problem um, involving a triangle. So this says, what's the largest possible area for a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 10? And what are its dimensions? So let's take a second to draw our triangle. And we know that the hypotenuse has to be 10. Other than that, we don't know much. So there's my triangle. And I know that I want the area. I want to try to, to maximize the area, right? I want the largest possible area. So let's so our area function would be a and right now it's just a equals one half x times y. Now that's in terms of two variables. We would like our area to be in terms of one variable, so we need another relationship. But since this is a right triangle, that relationship is probably going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So that means that x squared plus y squared we know is 100. And I'm going to replace this y for, by what it is in terms of x solving for y in this Pythagorean theorem. So that means y squared equals 100 minus x squared. And that means I can say y is the square root of 100 minus x squared. I don't really need the negative square root because I'm talking about lengths of sides of a triangle, so it wouldn't, wouldn't really make sense to have a negative side. So I'll put that in there. And that means that A of X is 1 half X times the square root of 100 minus X squared. All right, so there's my model. Let's talk about the domain. We know x can't be 0 or negative, because then you wouldn't have a triangle. So uh, x needs to be bigger than 0. And we also know that if you look at the function itself, we need 100 minus x squared to be bigger than or equal to 0. Otherwise, we're taking the square root of a negative. So for 100 minus x squared to be bigger than or equal to 0, that means 100 needs to be bigger than or equal to x squared, which means that x needs to be less than or equal to 10. So our domain should go from, and I mean, I guess you could even argue that, you could probably even argue that x can't be 10 because then you, then you would have, you wouldn't have a triangle because y could, would have no length. So um, let's use that, let's use that common sense and just say that the domain is going to go from 0 to 10. All right, so now we got to solve. Now what makes this problem a little a little more interesting than the other ones is that the derivative of this guy is going kind to of be a little funny. So solve. So a prime of x, we're going to use the product rule there, and I would recommend writing, I'm going to just copy down the function again actually. So a of x equals, I'm going to write it as 1 half x times, I'm going to write it like this. 100 minus x squared to the 1 half. That'll make taking its derivative a little easier. So we're going to need to use a product rule. So let's leave the 1 half x alone and times by the derivative of this guy here. So that's going to be 1 half 100 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. And then I'm going to times that by the inside because of the chain rule, the derivative of the inside. And that's negative 2x. And then I'll times by the I'll add it to the derivative of one half x, which is a half, and then I'll leave that 100 minus x squared to the one half by itself. So this is kind of a mess. Uh, let's see what we can do to clean it up a little bit. Let's make this. Um, let's see. You've got a half and a half, and then a negative two. So that's going to be become a negative one half. And then this x is up top, and this negative exponent is going to move those things down. So this is going to end up being uh, negative x squared over the squ over two square roots of 100 minus x squared. And then I'm going to add that to um, one half square root of 100 minus x squared. Yikes. Okay, so now what? Well, we're going to try to find critical points, and we need to do that by 
finding where the derivative is either 0 or undefined. It looks like it's undefined when x is 10 in this, according to this. But we already accounted for that point, so we just need to set this equal to 0 to find the real critical points. So I'm going to add this left term to both sides. So that gives me x squared over 2 square root of 100 minus x squared equals, let's write this as the square root of 100 minus x squared divided by 2. And if we cross multiply, we get 2x squared equals 2, and those square roots undo each other. So I got this. And so that means that 2x squared equals 200 minus 2x squared. All of which means if I add, I get 4x squared equaling 200. So x squared equals 50, which means x equals the square root of 50. To so be sure we found an actual max, we'll make our a prime number line, which goes from 0 to 10. The square root of 50 we'll put in here. The square root of 50 is bigger than the square root of 49 which is 7, so this must be bigger than 7. So let's plug in a number to the left of, of that into our derivative. And if you plug it into, um, let's see, let's plug 1 in. Let's plug, plug 1 into this version. You end up getting, you end up getting a positive because that left term is going to be a small fraction, or at least smaller than the right term. So that's a positive. And on the other hand, if you plug in something like 9, you end up getting a negative because the left-hand side becomes bigger than the right in this expression. So we found a max. And that means that's, um, that means we're almost done. Wait, let's go back to the question. What's the largest possible area? Okay, so we actually have to evaluate the area here. So a of square root of 50 equals, so our area function over here, that's going to be uh, 1 half square root of 50 times 100 uh, minus square root of 50 squared, and I guess that's all square rooted. So this is, an, this is going to be 1 half root 50 And then 100, 100 minus root 50 squared is 100 minus 50, which is 50. So we get another square root of 50. So we end up getting 50 over 2. So we get 25. So that's our maximum area. And the dimensions would be um, square root of 50 for x. And by symmetry, y will also be the square root of 50 because if you plug... Um, if you plug square root of 50 into, into our, the Pythagorean theorem to get what y is, you're going to get the square root of 50 as well. So y equals the square root of 50. All right, so now we'll interpret. So the largest possible area... is 25. I don't think there are units, so that's enough. And the dimensions are root 50 by root 50.